everyone in our anatomy on blackboard series we have discussed regarding the whole GIT and now we are moving towards the arterial supply of GIT. So GIT receives its major arterial supply through three ventral branches of iota mainly abdominal iota. First main artery is celiac trunk then is superior mesenteric artery then third one is inferior mesenteric artery. So based upon the supply of all these arteries, these arteries were also called as artery of foregut and superior mesenteric artery is also called as artery of midgut and this inferior mesenteric artery is also called as artery of hindgut. Today in our video, we will be exclusively talking regarding this celiac trunk and its branches. So now let us see regarding the celiac trunk which is also called as artery of foregut. We all know that the celiac trunk mainly arises from the anterior aspect or front of the abdominal iota exactly here at the level of T12 and L1 and this abdominal iota bifurcates at L4 as common iliac artery and this celiac trunk is almost 1.25 cm long and now let's see regarding the supply of celiac trunk we all uh, we all know that here the celiac trunk arises and the celiac trunk mainly supplies the foregut of GID. So let's see what are all the organs involved. So it involves the stomach and it extends up to the second part of duodenum where the common bile ducts get open. So it supplies up to the second part of duodenum and exactly at the location till the uh, opening of common bile duct and upper part of pancreas yes you can see here upper part of pancreas and it supplies spleen and along with that it supplies the liver and gallbladder so here comes our celiac trunk at the t12 and l1 level and this celiac trunk gives arises to three main branches one is left gastric artery the next one is splenic artery here and the third one is common hepatic artery so now let's see in detail regarding each artery in particular. So here now we are going to talk regarding the left gastric artery. This is one of the smallest branch of celiac trunk and it runs upwards like this to the left behind the lesser sac and it runs along the lesser curvature like this and in it, it end up anastomosing with the right gastric artery. So here this left gastric artery give two to three branches to the esophagus at the cardiac end of the stomach and here in lesser curvature of stomach it gives branches to the lesser curvature those were the gastric branches so this is one of the smallest branch and first is esophageal branches at the cardiac end and second point is gastric branches so if you have any doubt regarding the anatomy of stomach, what is lesser curvature, what is greater curvature, what is cardiac end, what is pyloric end, you just check out the link mentioned above in our, from our previous video. So now let us discuss regarding the common hepatic artery. This common hepatic artery arises downwards and to the right and it extends up to the upper border of the duodenum and here it gives its branches and it runs along the free margin of the lesser momentum along with the portal vein and bile duct. So this is the common hepatic artery and this is our bile duct present here and along with that we are having our portal vein. So our portal vein is like this. So here our common hepatic artery gives its branches and finally divides into the right hepatic artery and left hepatic artery and enters into the porta hepatis. We all know regarding the porta hepatis where we can see bile duct then hepatic artery and at last regarding the portal vein. So this is how the portal hepatis looks like. So now let us discuss regarding the branches of the common hepatic artery. So here I am using blue color just to differentiate it from other arteries. So now common hepatic artery is running up to the upper part of the duodenum and in the first part upper border of the first part of duodenum it gives branch that one is gastro duodenal artery. So in the lower border of the duodenum you can imagine that this is the lower border of the duodenum and here this gastro duodenal artery is divided into two branches. One is super, uh, superior pancreatico duodenal artery and another one branch runs along the greater curvature of the stomach 
and towards the right that one is right gastro epiploic artery and finally this right gastro epiploic artery again gets anastomosed with the left gastro epiploic artery that we will discuss later and now here the common hepatic artery divides into proper hepatic artery and right gastric artery so this right gastric artery goes along the lesser curvature of the stomach and gets anastomosed with the left gastric artery and this proper hepatic artery moves about as i had already told here there will be bile duct and here there will be portal vein along with that this proper hepatic artery moves about and divides into right and left hepatic artery and here it gave branches to the cystic uh, artery that it mainly supplies the gallbladder also like this so i'm just repeating this common hepatic artery first give branch as gastro duodenal artery in the upper part and uh, it further divides into superior pancreatico duodenal artery and right gastro epiploic artery and now this common hepatic artery further divides into proper hepatic artery and right gastric artery and this right gastric artery runs along the lesser curvature and gets anastomosed with the left gastric artery and this proper hepatic artery runs along with the bile duct and portal vein and uh, while entering into the porta hepatis it divides into the right and left hepatic artery also it gives branches to the gallbladder as cystic artery this is all regarding the common hepatic artery so now regarding the third branch that is splenic artery so this is the celiac trunk and left gastric artery then comes the common hepatic artery common hepatic artery gives branches to the gastro duodenal artery and gastro duodenal artery divides into superior uh, gastro duodenal artery and um, right gastro epiploic artery and this proper hepatic artery divides further into hepatic artery and gas right gastric artery and this uh, proper hepatic artery runs above and it divides into right hepatic artery and left hepatic artery and here this right hepatic artery gives branch to the gallbladder as cystic artery and this cystic artery supplies the supplies both the surface of the gallbladder above and below and now let us start regarding the splenic artery this splenic artery is the largest branch and it runs horizontally to the left along the upper border of the pancreas you can imagine that it runs behind the stomach and it reaches the spleen here and it mainly supplies the left suprarenal gland so you just imagine this has the left kidney and above we can see the suprarenal gland so this splenic artery supplies the left suprarenal gland upper part of the left kidney and here we can see the leno renal ligament and also the hilum of spleen and here it will give 5 to 7 splenic branches and now let us discuss regarding the branches of splenic artery here it will give numerous pancreatic branches which mainly supplies the body and tail of pancreas so just imagine that here the pancreas is there like this and here there will be two branches one is supplying the body and one is supplying the tail of pancreas so here body of pancreas is supplied by arteria pancreatica magna and here tail of pancreas is and this tail of pancreas is supplied by arteria cardiac pancreatica and finally these two gets anastomosed with the dorsal artery which may arise from any large vessel like inferior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric artery or celiac trunk and this splenic artery also give branches to the fundus through 5 to 7 short gastric arteries like this and at last it gives main branch that is left gastro epiploic artery So this left gastro epiploic artery gets anastomosed with the right gastro epiploic artery which is arising from the common hepatic artery. So now let us have a quick recap regarding the celiac trunk. So the smallest branch arising from the celiac trunk is left gastric artery and this left gastric artery gives branches to the esophagus through esophageal branches at the cardiac end of the stomach and uh, it also gives gastric branches to the lesser curvature of the stomach and uh, here next comes our common hepatic artery common hepatic artery arises like this and it moves up to the upper border of the duodenum and from there it gives a branch called gastro duodenal artery and this gastro duodenal artery divides further into superior pancreatico duodenal artery and it moves into the right gastro epiploic artery like this and this uh, hepatic prop, hepatic artery divides into proper hepatic artery and it divides into the right gastric artery this right gastric artery moves again along the lesser curvature of the stomach and it gets anastomosed with the left gastric artery 
and this now the proper hepatic artery it moves about in the port like along with the bile duct and uh, portal vein and it enters the porta hepatis as right and left left hepatic artery and this right hepatic artery gives branches to the gallbladder like this and that is cystic arteries and here now let us talk regarding the third branch that is the splenic artery which moves horizontally be behind the stomach and it supplies the spleen directly and this is the upper border of the pancreas so here this splenic artery gives branches to the body of the pancreas and tail of the pancreas the artery supplying the body of the pancreas were called as arteria pancreatica magna and this uh, tail is supplied by arteria cardiac pancreatis so these two arteries gets anastomosed with the dorsal artery behind the stomach which may be arising from any large vessels of the gut like celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery and this uh, splenic artery gives branches to the fundus of the stomach and it also gives right gastroepiploic artery which runs along the greater curvature of the stomach along with the greater momentum and it gets anastomosed with the left gastroepiploic artery So this is all regarding the artery of foregut that is celiac trunk. So if you have any queries, you just comment below and if you have any topics for suggestion also, just comment below. We will continue the discussion and happy learning and thank you all.